I'm Bob Hallmark in Henderson today. I'm out here at Lake Forest Park, a beautiful area. Uh, now that has really nothing to do with the story that I'm going to tell you today. Now over the years, we've all heard stories about uh, how people get into ministry, uh, and particularly those who have faith change their lives. And this is a story that we're doing today. Now we've heard of uh, different instances of people fighting drug addiction, uh, fighting criminal histories, uh, domestic abuse, things of that nature, it drives them to faith, and sometimes that faith drives them to ministry. And that's why we're going to introduce a man right now here, and this is uh, Mr. Larry Reedy. Hi. And uh, now, Larry, uh, uh, you are a minister of a different kind. Uh, you actually go into a uh, prison facility here at Bradshaw and actually minister to uh, the inmates there. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, now, there's a side light to this, and we're going to get to that in just a moment here. Uh, but let's tell a little bit of your story. Larry, uh, you're 62. Yes, sir. Uh, you're, you're a native son out here. Yes, sir. Uh, you were incarcerated, uh, sadly enough, yes, uh, for an almost three-year period. Yes, Six months shy of three years. Uh -huh. And uh, you say something happened to you there, I guess, that changed everything. Uh, you were pleading, praying to get out. You just didn't want to <coughs> be there anymore. Yes, the, the, the thing that changed me was being an indigent inmate. And uh, when you're an indigent inmate, that means you don't have money on your books, on your commissary. And I chose that path because I didn't want to burden my family with uh, having to send me money. And to be locked up, quite honestly, is very sad. But to be locked up without any money, there's another sadness level to that, which I can't even, you can't even comprehend how humiliating and humbling and embarrassing that is. Mm -hmm. But what, the many nights that I spent underneath the gray blanket, that old dirty gray, bright gray blanket, crying and begging the Lord to get me out of there, because I'll never, I said, Lord, if you'll just get me out of there, I won't ever come back, mm -hmm. is the reason it drove me back. And mm -hmm. in essence, that's what helped me, or helped God to help me create the Indigent Inmate Project. Okay. Uh, now, to set that up, uh, Larry actually uh, became very studious uh, on his Bible and uh, began to began to record verses on your own uh, and, to, and to remember them. Mm -hmm. One thing leads to another, uh, and you do get released, right? Yes, sir. Uh, but you didn't let it end there. No, sir. You decided, uh, I'm going to turn around, and the very place that he was praying to get out of is the place that he goes back to almost every day now, which yes. is Brad, Bradshaw State Jail yes, Facility. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you go back in there and you provide hope to some of these uh, guys that are in there that you can get your life back. Yes, sir. And how do you do that? You know, I, I first of all, I went in there looking for specific people, indigent inmates. But somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you need to be talking to them, not just about being indigent of supplies, of hygiene supplies, but being indigent of loved ones, indigent of male, indigent of family indigent of Jesus, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there's hope. And I'll, I talk to, uh, I have what's called out there the First Timer Project, where we get together with the guys that have just been locked up once, we bring them out, and I have some other guys who have been locked up multiple times, who we kind of uh, counsel them and explain to them about what they've lost and about what they've found and why they won't ever be back. And an interesting sidebar to that was, that before, when we started this, I, I spoke to the guys that were the uh, multiple offenders, and I said, you know what, guys, the Holy Spirit encouraged me to tell you this can be your first, last time. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I, and I get, I get uh, emotional when I think about it, but those guys are, I'm me, they're me and I'm them. Mm -hmm. I never got, I, I wore my t white t-shirt, as a matter of fact, to remind me of where I came from. Mm -hmm. And when I'm speaking to those guys, I tell them my birth, when I'm introducing myself, I tell them my birth given name is Larry Dale Reedy, but my TDC name is 1218809. You don't ever forget that when you're an inmate. You never forget your number. And uh, I'm not that number anymore. What does it do to these guys when they hear your story and they, I'm guessing what you're looking for is you're looking for that person like yourself who says, I want to end this now. I, I want to get out of here and I don't want to ever come back. I think about the first person who uh, came to find me there, this so-called 99, leaving the 99 to come find the one sheep. And I asked the guys always, I'm like, uh, are you that one sheep God sent me for? 
And I learned pretty quick when I was, as I was going along in my state, in my sabbatical, vacation, whatever they want to call it, being incarcerated, uh, that I was there for a reason. And God is close to the brokenhearted. And when you're in prison, the Bible says he's close to the bro close to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. And 100%, when you're in there and you're, and you're brokenhearted, I, pro I can promise you, assure you of that. And I never understood how God was changing me, transforming me by the way that I think, mm -hmm. so that I'm able to use this incredible mess that I was in to have this awesome message now. Okay. Now, as promised, we're gonna show you a couple of images here. Uh, take a look at this. This is Larry on a hoverboard. Yes, uh, you can see uh, that uh, he's uh, it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, I, I'm gonna have to ask you here, uh, what you use this hoverboard as a means to reach young people and uh, yes. new generations. Uh, you say this was kind of an accident. It really was. In 2019, I was at a friend's house and I saw this hoverboard over there in the corner and I thought, well, that's interesting, I think I'll get on this. So I got on it and started riding it and all of a sudden this idea came into my head that I would be able to uh, get the attention of younger people by riding this thing so I could speak to them about Jesus and invite them to you know, hear some, a word about Jesus. But the, another thing how God works, it's always in his plans. What I find now is that more people that are like, what's really going on are the older people. They're like, why are you on that hoverboard, Grandpa? And why ain't you broke your neck yet? And so it's kind of interesting how when you think you know what God's going to use something for a purpose, he flips the script and makes it totally about something else, or he adds to it. I believe that, I believe that it opens a door to them to give them something relatable, sort of like being already been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you one thing for certain, when you tell an inmate, when you give him your number, when they, you quote your number out loud, they get up on the edge of their seat and start listening because mm -hmm. they know you know gotcha. what it's like to be incarcerated. Now, uh, just so you'll know, Larry is a, a, a volunteer chaplain, is yes, that sir. right? Yes, and uh, you actually are a regular out at yes, uh, Bradshaw. Yes, I teach Purpose Driven Life there on Tuesdays at 1.30 and I also have the first time a project that's there and, and going into all kinds of different things and also spearhead and, and founder of the indigent inmate project that's mm -hmm. on that unit where I supply every month by with the help of generous contributions from New Oakland Church and a few other people that I'm affiliated with here I'll supply a toothbrush toothpaste deodorant and soap for the indigent inmates mm -hmm. so they can smell good <laughs> <laughs> I even talked to the guys that have been there multiple times about the First Timer Project, and the Spirit mentioned to me to mention to them that this can be your first last time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep coming back. There's, there's a, uh, 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 a joy that I find now in being on the right side of the law. Mm -hmm. In other words, having law enforcement look at you like you're somebody. And also, too, an interesting, funny story I have. I've been on the front page of my Henderson Daily News about five times over the past couple of years with the project, with the indigent inmate project with the Russ County Jail, and I hadn't been in handcuffs not one time. <laughs> Thankfully, yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was cute. But to get the respect of the judges, the DAs, law enforcement, and just the community in general, it's an amazing feeling, and it's one I don't deserve, but only God could put that together. When I think about second chances, I think about, you know, more than second chances. I've had multiple chances. But it's what you do with that chance is what makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with this horrible mess to create this incredible, beautiful message? And uh, again, I, I, I can't take any credit for it. I owe everything that I am to Jesus and to God alone. And I wouldn't be standing here or sitting here today with you, Bob, if it weren't for Jesus. Very well said. And there we have it. The Hovercraft Riding Minister. Thank you. Larry, thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. All right. And we'll have much more on this story tonight on Channel 7 News for KLTV Extra. I'm Bob Hallmark. You can take that.